Well, I did it again. I've made another DIY enclosure. I figured since I was making this enclosure again, I would film my process of how I built it. First things first, the wood I use for these enclosures is a sheet of four feet by eight foot pure bond aspen plywood from Home Depot. Home Depot will also cut the wood to any sizes you'd like, which is very convenient for anyone who doesn't own large saws. Now what's different about this plywood is that it is made with a soy-based pure bond adhesive that is formaldehyde free, so we don't have to worry about any yucky off-casting. Something else that is really important is that you have to buy the half inch thick sheet and not the quarter inch thick sheet because I definitely did not do that. This enclosure is going to be two feet by four feet, giving us a total of around 1,152 square inches of floor space. To start, I'm going to attach caster wheels to the base so it makes moving the enclosure around much easier. Once that's done, I'm going to mark out where I'm going to drill my pilot holes to attach the back to the base, and then I'm going to drill them out. This next step is a fun one to do alone, and that's figuring out how to attach two pieces without anyone's help. It's hard but it's doable. This is also where I start to run into some issues that didn't happen the last time I made this enclosure. Basically, the screws were causing the plywood to split, which you can actually see right here. Once I manage to get those screws in, I turn the enclosure over onto its side so that I can attach the side pieces by myself. I just repeat the process of drilling pilot holes and then drilling some screws in. By this point, I had to stop using the long screws and switch to something shorter to prevent any more splitting, which is why you're going to see chip clips along the enclosure. Um, those are splits that I had to glue back down. To protect the base of the wood from any water or urine, I'm trying out the Natural Earth Paint Natural Varnish. This is a non-toxic and plant-based varnish, which is great for using on wooden accessories that you want to protect. This varnish does happen to smell like mouthwash, so it is pretty pleasant. I also started applying it along the perimeter of the enclosure first because it does absorb into the wood a lot, and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to run out, but thankfully one bottle was just enough to cover the base. Next, I plan to paint the back and sides with a non-toxic white children's paint, but once realizing how many coats it would take to become opaque, I went and found some of the leftover white contact paper I had from my last enclosure, and I actually just had enough to do the sides and back, which you can see here is definitely a lot whiter than that children's paint. The next step was to add our glass sheet. To do this, I am using the GE 100% silicone. Make sure when you're using silicone that it's pure silicone as many may contain other additives and even fungicides. 
Here I am just cutting the tip off of the silicone and I in fact hurt my hand while doing this. For the front of my enclosure I am using a beautiful piece of 2 feet by 4 feet 3 millimeter thick glass. This was purchased from Speedy Glass. Using glass for an enclosure in my opinion is so much better and cheaper than plexiglass. Speedy Glass charged $48 for the glass and $10 for them to cut it to the size I wanted, so in total with taxes it came to $64.96. Glass is a lot stronger and to get plexiglass in a thickness that won't wobble can be very expensive. I'm also not a fan of the reflection plexiglass gives off when filming and the static electricity it creates makes any bedding dust stick to all of it. Once I silicone it, I use a paper towel to just wipe it smooth and remove any of the excess silicone. Now to build our lid. The method I'm trying today is a little different than how I've built lids in the past. First, I'm using one foot by two foot by eight feet framing lumber to build this, and I'll be building one large lid instead of two, like I usually do. I'm going to be using screws to hold them together, but I've also used glue and a staple gun in the past. So what I'm doing first is just drilling those pilot holes so that I can put the screws through and then I'm going to be screwing it all together. Someone's gonna be like, that's not how you do it. Well, that's how I did it. <laughs> and then you got yourself a nice little frame, but don't ask me if it's square. Then I've got a piece of quarter inch hardware cloth cut to size that I'm attaching using screws as well. Something I did not manage to attach yet was a handle and I did not paint the lid white, but those things can be done honestly anytime. And then you got yourself a pretty decent lid that should keep your hamster safely in their enclosure. The next step for me is to remove my rabbit's baby gate to be able to fit the enclosure in the room. Ah, you stay there. In order to do this, I place a blanket on the floor and I very carefully tip the enclosure onto its side and slowly slide it into my room. This definitely is the most nerve wracking part because I don't want anything to just fall apart. Thankfully, the enclosure is quite sturdy. Something I wanted to do to make using the lid easier was to add some simple door hinges and that is just what I'm doing here. And lastly, I added these gate hooks and eyes to lock the lid. I use these on my other enclosures and they work great at preventing a hamster from lifting the lid. And then the enclosure is complete. It's definitely not perfect, but things don't have to be perfect to be usable. And anytime I'm able to do something on my own, regardless if there's a flaw, I'm still pretty proud of myself. 
I hope this video maybe helped someone out there build their own enclosure or gave someone some inspiration to building their own. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!